what is the transformation that we are talking about is we don't want to work in t domain we want to do the calculation in different independent variable we don't want this t as an independent variable that's an objective so we are going to move to another independent variable called s so we'll be having a function of s now which means that the independent variable is changed from t to s so we are asking the question what kind of variable t is t can be a real variable t can also be a complex variable mathematicians deal with both so that means what do you mean to say is that even if you start with the real here even though you start real here you will end up in a parameter s which is in general complex in general complex means what i mean to say is that s in general will look like something like x plus i y you can always write down like that so you need to understand or you need to remember what do you mean by real part of s real part of s means when you write down like x plus i by then it is x so these are some uh, introduction about the function that you are starting this is the function you start with and this is the function you end or we say that we will get this function after doing the transformation so the question is how are you going to do how are you going to perform this transformation this transformation is done using an integral and therefore this comes under the general heading of integral transforms okay what you do is you perform an integration with respect to t so let me write down that t here so t runs from 0 to infinity so this is the given function integrate the given function with respect to t so with respect to t is here only thing is that i am going to multiply by e to the power of minus st so if i do this kind of uh, integration what happens is that since i am going to perform the integration with respect to t here all t will be removed and they will be substituted by numbers between 0 to infinity that's a meaning with respect to t means that particular variable that is t will be replaced by numbers between 0 to infinity that means the variable t will disappear once t is disappeared this t will disappear here t will disappear f of t will disappear in the sense disappear in the sense they will be transformed to some kind of numbers and finally what is left out is e is also a number so ultimately what is left out is s that means a function of t will be completely converted so our final result is that we will be getting a function of s so we say that this is the function of s so that's what we have written f of t will be converted to f of s how do you do it how do you do it is this one so this is by definition so this is what we say it is by definition so and by definition is it is tradition to write down here so we can write down def here so that means by definition this is the equation so which means that you don't have to write separately here <coughs> okay when you see this you understand that this is called the defining equation for the laplace transformation and the condition is that you you must have the positive values of t we classify the integral which is looking like this will become or which is classified as improper integral if one of the limits is infinity or both the limits are infinity or minus infinity or if the quantity here this is called integrand this goes to infinity it can go to infinity right even though there is a minus here if f of t is very large it can go to infinity so anything can happen this integral may not go to a finite value the entire integral can go to infinity when the integral value goes to infinity we say that it diverges so integral may converge integral may diverge so that situation will happen when there is an infinity present here or this fellow goes to in infinity here anything can happen so because of these reasons a little more or we say that careful understanding in mathematics we say it is analysis so we may have to do real analysis or complex analysis in order to understand the convergence condition for the laplace transform so what do you mean by that is you cannot say that for every s this is valid it's not possible so there is another trouble subject to some conditions on s this function fs will survive otherwise the fs itself is meaningless or it may go to infinity so these are the places where difficulties are there you need to define Uh, some conditions on yes for which this laplace transform exist so this is one more point mission but just for information i would like to give an equation uh, with which you will be uh, feeling 
the importance of this particular topic in statistical mechanics. So let me therefore write down an equation and after which you will be finding that this is very important. So let me write down this equation. So there is an equation here where it goes from 0 to infinity. So that looks very similar to this. Instead of f of t, instead of f of t, we are going to have some g of e. Okay, so it's a, it's a function of t here. This is a function of e here, capital E, where capital E is energy. We have this e to the power of minus st. Here we have e to the power of minus beta e. So this e is that c, so both are same e. Then you have a dt, so d. So there is a t here, there is a t here, there is a t here. That means e here, e here, therefore this must be e here. Okay. So these two equations are looking very similar, right? So, and if you are going to perform this integral, we are going to get what is known as a capital Z. So, let us not uh, worry or let us not go into detail what it is, but this is what is known as the partition function. Capital Z is known as the canonical partition function. And G of E is the density of states of a canonical ensemble. So, if you are going to do or if you are going to have a canonical ensemble, the density of states is G of E. Beta represents 1 divided by kt. So, this is known as the inverse temperature. So, beta is 1 over kt, E is the energy. So, as you can see that this particular T has direct correspondence with the energy of the system. And then the parameter S is direct connection with the beta. Okay, We say that the temperature of the reservoir. So, temperature of the reservoir is directly connected to the S parameter in the Laplace transformation. So, dt dE. And the right hand side, the transformed quantity is here you have f of s here and certainly this z will be a function of beta. So z is known as the canonical partition function. So let us not uh, discuss more about this. The point is that you directly have uh, the relation here which means, so what do you understand here is that you ask the question what is a partition function? canonical partition function. The answer is canonical partition function is nothing but Laplace transform of its density of states. This is Laplace transform. This is the original function. Laplace transform is multiplication by e power minus st. Original function is f of t. Laplace transform of f of t is f of s. This is how you read and then understand. Laplace transform of f of t is f of s. Which means that if you are, if you are, uh, if you want to write down in a proper form Laplace transform of, like this you write down, of Laplace transform of f of t is denoted by capital F of s. If it is the case, how will you, how will you write down this expression? Let me erase this. How do you write down this expression is Laplace transform of this g of e is z. So, what is canonical partition function? Laplace transform of the density of states in the canonical ensemble. That's all. So, that is the answer that you have. So, this is how Laplace transform will be useful in statistical mechanics. Okay, so the standard notation every time you have to write down the standard notation, let it be there. So, the, the Laplace transform of the, the function f of t is denoted by capital F of s. So, this is one thing. First condition is f of t can be continuous function. It can also be piecewise continuous function. Both are okay. Both are acceptable. Okay. For every problem, this is not possible. But for Laplace transformation, piecewise continuous functions are also acceptable. Periodic functions are also acceptable. That is a point to be noted. You don't demand always continuous function only. Okay. In this case, continuous functions are fine. Piecewise continuous functions are fine. Periodic functions are also okay. All of them can be Okay, provided t is greater than 0. So, that is first condition. That definition is there. Now, this definition, because of this definition, there is some underlying condition coming into picture. What is that condition? Let us understand. There is an infinity here and t is here. Okay, which means that I am going to substitute infinity into the f. So, suppose if you are going to have f of t equal to t, then what is f of infinity? will go to infinity. So that means this fellow will go to infinity. But this fellow what happens is e to the power of minus st is there. 
So e to the power of minus infinity will come here. So there are two people are there. One for is infinity this side. e to the power of minus st what happens is will go to e to the power of minus infinity. So one fellow is growing like this at the rate of infinity. The other fellow is decaying like that coming down. Coming down means approaching zero. Going up means uh, going to the sky, touching the sky. So one fellow is you know, moving to the sky at the speed of infinity. The other fellow is coming and touching the ground at the speed of e to the power minus infinity. So who is fast? Who will be uh, touching zero fast or who will touch first means e to the power minus infinity fellow will touch the ground first because this fellow will be moving much much faster than a linear function. Isn't it? Uh, exponential function is the fastest function among all of them. So the, uh, you can understand by drawing the graph. Okay, that's the meaning. So because of this reason what happens is if you are giving a competition between a linear function here and an exponential function who will win the competition is exponential fellow will win. He will be the winner. Therefore what happens is e to the power minus infinity will win the race. That means this e to the power minus infinity will go to zero. So therefore what happens is this fellow will approach zero faster than this fellow approaching to infinity. Therefore what happens is this product doesn't go to infinity. This is the point. This product will not go to infinity because this fellow will take care of this fellow. And so what happens and so what happens is this infinity when you are putting it here this integral will not give any trouble and it will converge. So this will converge. Let me write down. This will converge. That's a condition. This is an example here. If I am going to put a different example, the scenario will change. So right now we will say that this kind of integral will converge if if f of t does not grow faster than e to the power of alpha t. So this is very important. So this is linear. Okay. So let me remove the linear situation here. Now you ask the question what happens if this is e to the power alpha t. Then what happens? This becomes e to the power infinity. So the fellow who is going to infinity will also uh, go at, this, at the rate of e to the power. The fellow who is going to zero he will also moving at that same speed. Therefore what happens is that product will not go to infinity. This product will not go to infinity. We will be still on the safer side. Safer side means converging. So the point is that convergence is guaranteed as long as this f of t does not grow faster than e to the power of alpha t. Okay, Of the same order like e to the power of alpha t is okay. But much much faster than e to the power of alpha t if he is growing then trouble comes that this product will go to infinity. Once the product goes to infinity the value of the integral is infinity. Okay, and There is no point in doing any calculation with infinity. So at that time we will say that the integral diverges. So therefore let me therefore make this conclusion. This will converge if f of t does not grow faster than e to the power alpha t. So otherwise what happens is otherwise the integral for integral I will write only i the integral or we say that like this integral diverges. So the integral, this is integral, integral will converge, integral will diverge. Whenever integral diverges, we say that the Laplace transform does not exist. So this is the important conclusion. We should not say that always you know, calculate the Laplace transform. Laplace transform may exist sometime, may not exist. Laplace transform will exist if it converges. Laplace transform does not exist when the integral diverges. Let me give what is the terminology for growing faster than e to the power of alpha t. So this is technically, technically means mathematicians call this property by a particular word and that word is exponential order. What do you mean by exponential order is e to the power alpha t is there right? e is exponential order is alpha. So what is what do you mean by that is what what is the meaning of this is let me therefore write down uh, maybe like this I will write down the meaning is like this absolute value of the given function f of t because given function is f of t it's there here 
so you only take the absolute value okay why absolute value is i don't want negative values uh, we are all we are interested to convert all negative values to positive value why do you want to convert this is an integration and integral represents the area under the curve so when some curve like this suppose you are going to have a curve like that uh, you will be uh, you will be having a temptation that the positive area and the negative area is cancelling okay we don't want to cancel any area here we want to find out the total area under the curve therefore what actually we are doing is we have to flip this this negative also you take a mirror image and put it here so uh, you also convert this one to the positive no that kind of conversion is what this uh, absolute value does that's the meaning so that you don't cancel any area all area you have to sum it up it means total so that total area is from 0 to infinity okay that total area should not go to infinity that's called a diverging so now you understand why that condition comes absolute value of t should be less than or equal to less than or equal to means converging greater than means greater than something means it can go to infinity less than means it is bounded mathematically it's called bounded is then is equal to this e to the power of alpha t you can put e to the power of alpha into t of course you can put a constant here nothing wrong any constant is okay. so when the absolute value of the given function is bounded we will not read like that absolute value of f of t less than or equal to m into e to the power of alpha t we don't read like that instead of that you understand that the function f of t is bounded bounded means there is a boundary okay above the boundary it will not go to the sky that's the meaning of bounded okay so bounded is what is called the less than or equal to when when you when something is going to infinity then we say greater than or equal to. okay so this is a uh, you know mathematical terminology so you should also be comfortable with mathematical terminologies and this is the easy way to understand growing faster than e to the power of alpha t okay so uh, let me erase this board and then i'll come back with an example in order to illustrate the concept of divergence